Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay and welcome to my cabin once again. Now I thought I'd do another video on my shoes, this time I'll focus on my racing shoes. Now I only really do three types of racing. One is my first love of the track, also run on the road of course, and the other one is cross country. If you want me to advise on what shoes to wear for a 100 mile trail race, probably not the best person to come to. Uh, so I'll have a little discussion what I use for those three types of races and perhaps a few left field ones that you might not have thought of. Just to say also that I'm, I'm almost at 1,000 subscribers. Maybe by the time this one has come out, I might have just got there. So thanks very much for everyone who's subscribed and really appreciate that. It's taken me about a year now of doing these videos sort of a similarly regular basis to get there. Hope I'm getting a bit better at it and look forward to doing more, especially when I can get running again. Hello, so let's first talk about track shoes. Now this is the Nike ZoomX Dragonfly. Now you might think this is some sort of super duper wonderful shoe with a massive carbon plate in it and a load of ZoomX. Well, it's only partly true because apparently it doesn't actually have a carbon fiber plate in it. It does have a plate, but this sort of red line here, but it's actually apparently a PBAX plate, which is the PBAX is basically the same material as, as the actual ZoomX. So it's obviously, made in a different composition and this one is only in inverted commas 130 pounds the nike air zoom victory which is more geared towards sort of 800 1500 than this one which is more geared to sort of like longer races from 1500 up to the 10,000. This, this is actually slightly cheaper shoe although this is the only one i've got now this would be quite a revelation for me because this is basically like half a, half an X percent. So the stack height here has to be 25 mils or less. And then the next percent is probably around about 35, something like that, isn't it? So it just feels like you've got like a very light next percent on, and it just sort of throws you sort of forward to the front, even though this plate is at the back. Um, it just feels like you want to sort of get yourself forward. So I'll, I'll link in my review of this shoe, but I've now used it in four races three of which were uh, successful, and, then the, and the fourth one was the one I tore my calf in. I did 62 seconds in my 400 meters, I did a 218 in my 800, which is probably my best race of the year, I think. Well, it certainly was on age graded, and also did a 3000 in 1032. Now, I haven't worn spikes in a, in a 3000 track race for some years now, and certainly this sort of felt like I was just sort of wearing a, a road racing shoe. Unfortunately, it didn't really help me get to finish that 1500, but uh, I was carrying an injury into that one. I shouldn't really have run, so lesson learned there. But this shoe isn't actually that light compared to some spikes. In my size, UK 13, it actually comes in at 187 grams. Now, for me, that's really light compared to some of my shoes, which, uh, say, the Alpha Fly is just over 300 grams. Now, I've got some spikes that will give us an alternative in a minute, which are actually somewhat less than that. But if you certainly if you can get hold of a pair of these and you like doing the old track race, then I'd certainly recommend it. I wouldn't say it's because it's like a really fast shoe. I think it's just because it's sort of a bit like the next percent. It just sort of enables you to sort of feel like you know, there's a bit more cushioning under your foot than you used to in a traditional track spike, which can be really harsh. And I think especially for me these days, when I'm not as fast as I was, I'm not really sort of appreciative of that really aggressive sort of ultra minimalist shoe that some track spikes are and as you can see this has actually set three world records and i think well it's not really the shoe because i think all those world records were there for the taking and certainly mo's hour record that hadn't been attacked for years and he only basically ran his half marathon speed in it i mean it's a tremendous performance to run about 59 minutes effectively on the track but it wasn't like a startling performance you know never to be seen again and he even checked a guy in the in the 5,000 and 10,000 meter, meter world records he only just beat Bacalia's times from best part of 15 20 years ago and no one else has actually sort of come there any, any better so you know Bacalia was wearing sort of the spikes of the 90s which um, clearly don't have Sumex phone in them and uh, yet he was able to run nearly as fast so I think, you know, you've got to think that these shoes very much are down to the athlete. But if they help you make you want to get out there and you feel nice on foot, then certainly it's worth having. Now, as the uh, Dragonflies can be quite hard to get hold of, uh, like all the, the Nike shoes or any of the uh, sort of the super shoes at the moment, this is the Nike Zoom Tubo 3. Now, this is a shoe that you can, if you sort of root around, get on a quite a good deal. I think I picked these up for about 60 quid. They are also the lightest shoe that I've got. They've only got a four spikes at the back, whereas the dragonflies actually have six. 
and just sort of feeling these two this one on the left the um, Matubo it just feels so much lighter and in fact in my size it comes in at 143 grams which certainly for a UK 13 is quite a remarkably light shoe it's sort of built up is basically I think the, the Dragonfly is almost like the replacement for this one because it's quite a sort of reasonable weight of foam there and you've got the cutaway in the back like you also have in all Nike shoes because the, the Dragonfly has got the same. So if you're looking for a shoe that's a bit more affordable and uh, you can't get hold of the Dragonfly I certainly recommend taking a look at the this Matubo 3. Now if you don't fancy wearing track spikes then this one is the Nike Streak LT4. I would say that's the closest to a track spike you can get without actually having spikes in it. I mean this is really an aggressive shoe. This actually weighs pretty much the same as the Dragonfly. There's just a bit of a little wedge there and a bit of it in, in, in the front as well. And you, It's basically a Nike Zoom as it says there you can see. But if you wear this on the road, I mean, you, you might think, oh, I can race the 5K in that. But I think, you know, you get about half a mile down the road and thinking, oh, Jesus, I can feel the road in every step here. I think for me these days, this is just a bit too aggressive. But if you take it onto a track or something like a grass or, or sand, this is quite a good option because it is so light, nothing much to it. When you want basically just a shoe to stop you sort of um, picking up glass in your feet, and this is probably about the best thing you can have bar a spike. And I did actually wear this for a couple of 800s a couple of years ago when I was just recovering from an Achilles injury. When I just thought that wearing the spikes that I had available at the time, i.e. sort of like the Matumbo, like an earlier version of that, would have been a bit too aggressive. So certainly worth checking this one out if you can get it. It's probably a bit hard to get hold of at the moment. So one that, one that sort of comes and goes. But it, you, know, you can usually pick this up reasonably cheaply because you know, well under £100 for sure. I do also have the Nike Spike Flat version which is basically the same shoe as this with the spike plate. But I think if you're going to use a track spike you may as well use the Zoom Matumbo or the Dragonfly something like that or like a proper spike. Whereas this is a bit of a contrived one. Quite, maybe quite good for training but certainly if you want an actual, an actual road shoe that you can actually sort of uh, run to the track in then this is probably your best bet. Now, if you think that the uh, Nike Streak LT4 is a bit too minimalist, and probably, to be honest, it probably is for me these days, then this is the Adios 5. I think that would be the shoe that I might want to sort of think about wearing if it was like a 10K. Because A, it's because it doesn't have a sh the huge stack height. So it's actually, I think, it's, I think I'm pretty sure this is actually a legal shoe for the track. Although they're not quite sure who's going to be checking. Although, having said that, apparently UK, UK Athletics have now adopted the shoe rules. So, technically, even like a league race or an open meeting, they might check your shoes. So, if you want a legal shoe, then certainly the Adios 5 is one that's worth considering. In fact, any of the Adi Zero shoes, I would say, is worth considering. A, is like a budget option. So, the other options worth looking at are the RC2. It's basically like a light strike version of the Adios. I think it might actually be slightly lighter. And there's also the Takakumi Sen 6, which I don't have, which is an even more minimalist flat than the Adios. If you certainly look looking for a shoe that's not going to cost you a fortune then one of those three I think is certainly worth using. It's also a very good shoe for track sessions as well. This is the shoe that I've traditionally worn for track sessions or at least variants of it for years. So if we move along to cross country, now cross country throughout the world can be slightly different. I mean you get the feeling if you watch some American races they have like 5k road races on grass and then they have like drinks tables, kilometer markings, they talk about PBs or you do a typical British cross country race where it's like thick mud, you know you can hardly a dry bit on the on the whole course you're constantly up and down constantly breaking your stride and you think oh Jesus where's the track or the road. So I have to admit that I don't really actually like cross country that much those really muddy sort of wet conditions you know not really my cup of tea but it was always a great sort of feeling of satisfaction when you finish a cross country race. Now this shoe here I've had I've actually worn in two cross, uh, cross country races last winter. Obviously this winter has been a bit of a challenge with virtually no races on. I think I did hear of one cross country race that went on another weekend with like a wave start. Now this is the Nike Zoom Victory 5 cross country. If you look on the Nike website there's a somewhat more exotic colorway. But this one is a rather sort of a drabby greeny. I think in certain lights that sort of greeny material appears. <clears throat> But this is easily the, the lightest cross-country shoe I've ever had. This shoe only weighs about 190 grams in my size, which is basically pretty much the same weight as the Dragonflies. Obviously with cross-country, you sort of wear different spike lengths according to how muddy it is. And I think these were originally 9 mils. But I think if it's really muddy, you can get like 12 mil ones, even, even 15 or 18. Although you'd have to be extremely muddy to justify anything that long. 
Well, what I like about this shoe is just because it, it's so light, but it has this sort of vapor weave material at the front, which is exactly the same material that it has in the next percent. So it's sort of quite a familiar feeling. It's not really waterproof, but it's certainly sort of splash proof. So if it was like an early season race and there's only a bit of water around, you'd probably keep your feet reasonably dry. I would say this one comes up quite sort of tight, even for a spike, which is meant to be obviously quite a tight shoe. So I think this shoe, I'd certainly recommend you go sockless, or if you don't want to wear sockless, you might want to go up a size. So it's something to bear in mind. Having said that, I, this is a UK 13, same as all my other shoes. Although no, I don't really get much choice because the next size up will be a 14, so that would be a whole centimetre longer, and that certainly would be would be too long for me. If I was doing one of those American cross country races over a golf course with drink stations and uh, you know, looking to break my five kilo PB in a cross country race, I might even consider wearing something like the the, the Streak LT4 because it's certainly as light as the, the Zoom Victory cross country spike that I just showed, and it's got some reasonable grip on the back as well. It might be the, you know one that you might even consider wearing the, the spike flat for that one. One thing I would say about cross country races in the Britain, they really do have to by definition allow you to wear a spike. So some people do wear trail shoes, but the problem with trail shoes are that they're a lot heavier, especially that you're gonna get them wet straight away. So, you know, probably a trail shoe can be as much as 100 grams more than a cross country spike. So unless you've got a burning desire to wear a trail shoe, then I certainly always recommend wearing a cross country spike in a cross country race. A, tra a trail race is kind of different beast because that may have a bit of road on it as well and a bit of gravel so you need something a bit more adaptable but certainly a cross-country race you should be able to wear spikes all the time. So coming on to road shoes which is undoubtedly the most common shoe what well, no real surprise that the next percent is my favorite here and by quite a long way I'd say. Now there's often discussions I see on the internet from shoe reviewers about saying, would you use a different shoe for a different distance? Well, I don't really ever understand that because I used this one from like 30 second sprints up my road trying to reclaim a Strava segment down my road to, to a full marathon. And for me, I've tested it and I've worn it. It's the lightest road shoe I've got apart, apart from the LT4, which I think, you know, I wouldn't last half a mile of that before my calves and Achilles were complaining. But you know, all these sort of low stack profile ones, they are actually are even heavier than this one, which is quite remarkable. And I think these days you just feel like you're just bouncing off the ground and it just makes me want to go fast. So if I look back at my races over the last couple of years since I got this, then I've worn it for from a mile time trial during lockdown to park runs over 5k to 10k road races to a 10 mile race in the Great South Run to a half marathon and a full marathon. And I can't say that they didn't really disappoint in any of them. I mean, the fact I'm a lot slower than I was, say, 20 years ago is down to me, not the shoe. But there's really no contest here. So if anyone says you should use a meta racer for a 5K because it's like low profile and firm, I say, well, have you actually raced at, um, both meta racer and the next percent? And did you really run faster in the meta racer? Or are you just saying that? So, yeah, comments below if you uh, if you agree with that one. And also you get comments like, oh, you can use this one like the Adi Zero Pro or the Meta Racer up to half marathon because again, it's not much cushioning in it. I'm like, well, half marathon for me is like one hour 25 I did my last one. That's still a very long run for me. I mean, I want like a lot of cushion to run that far. I mean, if you go out for a trading run, run 30 miles, do you consider that a sprint? So again, you know, I want to feel like I can get through those races and you know, run the next day. Especially lot like when you're training for a marathon, you're doing half marathons often as a sort of build up to, to the full marathon. So the last thing you want to do is wear some ultra minimum shoe and be hobbling for a week afterwards. So I think that's another thing where these shoes, these super shoes really do shine now, that as well as sort of feeling that they're fast, they just sort of like, A, they make you last the course, and then B, the next day, you can actually go out and do a little recovery jog, whereas often day after a race in, say, Adios or Nike Streaks from the mid-90s, I would have to sort of like be hobbling for a few days and have terrible Achilles problems. But I just don't really get that so much in these now. So having said that, the next percent is obviously very expensive and all those other ones are very expensive as well. So what did I used to wear before the next percent? Well, this is actually the Adios one. This is like the first boost version. There were a couple of pre-boost versions that I had. I think I had two of those. So I've now basically had seven different versions of the Adios. So the ones I've got up on the treadmill behind, the black one is the latest five one, and then this orange one here is the boost one. Now this is the shoe I actually used in my marathon four years ago. I actually run faster in this one than the next percent, but I think that's because I was four years younger. When I was graded, there was uh, slightly better this year. But I used to do like all my races in this one as well. So I'd do 5Ks, park runs, 10Ks, 
I think I've done the old half marathon in this one as well. So again, if you wanted a, a bit like the track options for the longer races, if you wanted a good option that wasn't a carbon plated shoe, that's not going to set you back more than £100, then certainly look at the Adi Zero range, because as well as the Adios, you've got the RC2 and you've got the Takikumi Sen one as well, and even the SL20, which I think is more of a trainer, to be honest, but you could certainly race in that one as well. I mean, it's certainly as light as the Adios. So in case you're wondering, the Adios one, it's yeah, even though it's sort of a shoe that was around about 2015, I think this one came out, there's a bit more sort of overlays to it, and I feel, I feel a bit like a throwback to the days when they had a bit more of a leathery material. So although having said that, this one is only slightly more heavier than the, the Adios 5 is currently. But if you compare the two now then it's really sort of like, you know, nothing much to that. It's like what they call these engineered meshes on the Adios 5. Then a lot of stuff going on on the Adios. But I used to really like the Adios one because it actually did actually fit me. And I think of all the Adios shoes, the, the Adios one is the one I, I prefer just because it, it fitted me the best. But So I've just hold on to this one last one. I think I've had about four or five pairs of it. I've done about 60 miles in this orange pair. And uh, maybe a shoe that you just sort of keep for uh, the odd run, just to reminisce of, of the days gone by when we couldn't wear carbon plated, plated shoes. We have to sort of muck it in these low profile ones. And then we used to say we were better runners because of it. <laughs> in fact, we weren't. We were just as slow as we were before. So we just finished this little section on the road ones by talking about the shoes that I'm sort of keen to try out as a next best to the next percent. Now I've got the Adios Pro here from Adidas and I've got the New Balance RC Elite. Now these are probably two shoes that I haven't really given any airtime to fall on my feet. I've just think I've done about one slow 5k in the RC Elite and I've done a little two mile treadmill walk on the, on the Adios Pro. But the Adios Pro is doing so well in the London Marathon and the World Half and the top two Brits were in the RC Elite in the London Marathon. So I think of all the shoes that are contenders to the Nike ones, these two are the ones that are sort of doing the best. So I'm keen to give these far more of a go maybe in some hard training runs, maybe I'll even try them in the old park run or something if and when park runs ever come back, just to sort of get some actual real world data. Because it's all very well saying, how do they actually fare in a race? But you actually, no, to, no, she did one or a park run, which is, well, you can race it, can't you? Well, that, as I always do. So thanks very much for watching. And as I said, earlier, I think I'm almost at 1,000 subscribers. When I checked, I was at 997. So by the time I've edited this and uploaded, I may have actually got there. So very appreciative to everyone who's been watching over the last year or so been quite a little challenge to me because I'm not really much of a natural person to stand up in front of a camera in fact when I look back in my sort of uh, earlier days there's hardly a picture of me let alone a video of me so you know this has been quite a challenge so I hope you appreciate some of my insights into the shoes I'm also trying to do a bit more of my sort of stats one with my power of 10 and run Britain rankings hat on building on that one I did on the marathon um, a few weeks ago which I thought was really interesting just to sort of formulate some thoughts on how the shoes are affecting performance. I think I'll look at the uh, sort of the shorter distances next to see whether this is similar patterns and also maybe trying to see if I can analyze some of the latest races to see what the actual trends are in people, what shoes people are actually wearing. Okay, so thanks once again for watching. Hope you found this interesting and look forward to seeing the next one. Okay, bye. Daisy says hello. Have you subscribed, Daisy? You might be the thousand subscriber. Do you think? Maybe not. I think she wants more biscuits. That's what she wants. All right then. See you later then, Daisy.